My regular viewers might recognize this piece. I did this uh, several months ago, probably getting close to a year. Very unusual, at least to me. I had never turned anything like this before, but we're going to turn another one today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today we have cork oak. This comes to us from our friend Dennis in California. Dennis and his wife brought this up about a year ago, maybe not that long, close, and I just love turning it. It's so unique. We'll talk about it. The piece is about six and a half inches square, uh, three inches tall on one end, about two and a half inches tall on the other end. Dennis has sealed up the ends. This was cut in March of last year, 20, March of 20. What I learned from turning the other piece, I did some research on it, uh, ju just for those that don't know, cork for like a wine bottle or any other cork that, that you need to have for any other purpose comes from a cork oak tree. I just didn't know that. And what they do is they take a chainsaw and they cut down, down through the bark of the tree while it's still standing and living. And then they take big pry bars and they pry that cork off and make corks for bottles and bulletin boards and whatever else. And then seven years later, they can do it again. Same tree. It doesn't kill the tree. It just allows them to harvest the bark from the cork oak tree. This is what the wood looks like. Looks like oak. Looks a little like white oak, I guess. Now the other piece that I showed you came from a full round and I've, I've cut this one in half because I didn't want to, I didn't want to duplicate what I'd already done and also I didn't want to waste the wood. I want to be able to turn another piece. So now I'm going to take this over to the drill press. I'm going to drill a two and a half inch clearance hole with a flat bottom for my chuck jaws to set against. In the middle of that, I'm going to drill a five sixteenths inch hole for my three eighths inch woodworm screw. We'll get it over here to the lathe, get it mounted up, and start turning. I'm going to start by working on this corner. I want to round this, these two uh, square ends up. I'm going to approach from the top down so that I'm not lifting this bark up off of the oak. I want to keep the bark on there, so I'm going to be working this way. We're going to be turning at 680 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask, and face shield on. We're almost there. You know, I'm going to go sharpen up. We got it all. I don't know if that's the shape we want. I think it is. I'm gonna come down here, work on the bottom, flatten it off, and put in a recess. We'll mark out for the recess. And this will give me an idea of where I can come with the side if I want to make it a narrower bottom. And we'll go ahead and cut that recess. I'm going to see if I can pick the speed up any. Well, yes I can. Go about 1200.
Now I'm going to use my dovetail recess tool to create the dovetail on the side of that. But I need to raise up my tool rest a little for that. Nice dovetail inside there. Now I'll come back over here and finish up the side and probably narrow down that bottom some. Make my buddy Dave happier. Much cleaner cuts at that speed. Do have some cracking here. I don't remember any cracking on the other one. They don't bother me for a second. In fact, I kind of like them. Kind of adds a nice pattern. Do some shear scraping. Time for sanding. I'm going to start sanding with my Sandoflex. This is 180 grit. And I'm going to gently sand the bark just to clean it up, smooth it out a little bit. Not much. There's a little bit of dirtiness right here. So I'll show you that in a moment. I get asked fairly often, why do you sand in reverse, Phil? And I don't often get the chance to show you. I have shown this before, however. But you can see the fibers of the wood because of this crack. That's about the only reason you can see it. They all go that way. And that's because the chisels out here cutting the wood and pushing those fibers that way. So when I sand in reverse, it, now it's spinning away from me. And I'll have this, my two inch disc sander, sanding down against it with this leading edge. I can pick those fibers up and cut them off. Now it doesn't matter that normally you wouldn't have cracks. It's still, the fibers still over here are going that way. It's just, I'm just showing it because I don't always have cracks and you can't always see it so plainly. But that's the reason. That's the reason to sand in reverse. Pick those fibers up and cut them off and make, make the surface smoother and cleaner and faster. Okay, so I'm going to start at 80 grit, although I don't need to at all. Got a very nice finish on there, but I'll start at 80 grit just in case I miss something. And I'll sand up through 400, but I will start with my Sandoflex, as I said, at 180 grit. And I'll show you both of those as soon as I get my mask on. Then with the lathe spinning in reverse at about 350. You see? Can you see those cracks? They're cleaner already. I'm not done, but they're cleaner already. And I don't feel that, I don't feel those fibers sticking up like I could see them before. So that's why you sand in reverse. Hope that helps. I'll be doing this for a bit and I'll bring you back and we'll put some finish on there. See you in a bit. Just as I did with the last piece of cork oak that I did, I'm going to use Howard Feed and Wax. My thinking there was I was afraid shellac would make the uh, 
bark hard and with the piece that I showed you earlier it's still very supple now shellac might not make the bark hard I don't know I just don't want to take that gamble so we're going with Howard feeding wax and I'm not going to put it here in the middle because I, I need to sign it there and the ink won't stick to this since it's mostly wax but I'll do that after I sign it hey I've been watching somebody else lately uh, that, that deserves a lot more viewers than he has a lot more subscriptions than he has Andy's Cornish Creations man that guy he's talented he does a lot of wood turning but he does other things as well he's a very talented wood turner but he's also a stone carver and he works with metal. He just made a very cool uh, oak and steel mallet. Oh man, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. Give him a look. I'll put a link in the uh, upper right hand corner of your screen right there. See that? There it is. Andy's Cornish Creations. And I'll put, uh, I'll put the link down in the description for this video as well. Give him a look. Subscribe to him. I think you'll be happy you took a little time. Andy's Cornish Creations. Okay, I'm going to take uh, I've got a little bit of this stuff, probably too much of it, in this can. And I'm going to brush it into the bark where my rag won't reach. And then the way that I will get it out of the bark, after this sets up for about a half an hour, I'll come out here and use my uh, air compressor. And I'll blow 150 pounds of air pressure while the piece is spinning and that'll blow it out of there. And then I'll take a clean toothbrush and buff it on the bark part. This is just so cool. I just I just can't believe this. So I will let this set up for half an hour. I'll take care of the bark like I told you. Blow it out and buff it and I'll buff the rest of it with just a clean rag while the piece is spinning. And then we will turn it around and start working on the inside. See you in a bit. I've turned the piece around and have the chuck expanded into the recess. We're going to be turning at 1300 RPM, half inch standard grind bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. I want to keep an ample amount of uh, bark because it's so cool looking, but at the same time, I don't want them too thick. So we just have to find a happy medium here. And that might be it. Yeah, I don't think I want to go any thinner than that. I'm not used to dealing with a recess which comes up inside the bottom so I want to make sure I'm not getting too close here. We're okay, we're about three quarters of an inch right now maybe, maybe five eighths. I think I'm going to scrape the sidewall with my one inch negative rake scraper while I still have a little support in the middle. Looks okay.
Okay, quarter inch, quarter inch on the sides as well. We're good. Time for sanding. Once again, I'll start the sanding with my Sando Flex. I'll gently sand all the bark. And then I'll switch to my two inch disc starting at 80 grit and working up through 400. I'll use forward and reverse. And I'll show you both of those as soon as I get my mask on. I'll do a little more of that. And then with the lathe spinning forward at about 350. Now when it's, when it's spinning forward, my sander is also spinning forward. And I'm using the leading edge, this edge. So as this comes up, this is going down. It's most efficient that way. And then in and then in reverse, I'm going to reverse my drill as well. And that serves two purposes, uh, reversing it. You don't want to you don't want to have it coming forward on this outer edge. That's a bad idea. You want it you want it turning away as it comes out. Away from the edge, not into it. You'll catch it for sure. Hope that's all clear. So this is what I'll be doing for a little bit. I'll bring you back and we'll put some finish on there. See you in a bit. It doesn't take much of this uh feed and wax. I probably won't even need any more on, on my rag. And I love that color of brown on this oak. Kind of mellow. And then we'll just brush it onto the bark or cork, or however you want to refer to it. I wish I could figure it out. I guess it's both. So I'll get this finished up. Uh, buff it up in half an hour and we'll take a look at it. We're almost done boys and girls. See you in a bit. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shot to this piece. If you'd share the video that would be terrific. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Well here it is. One cork oak bowl in the books. Isn't that cool looking? It's just, it's just too cool. I worry about people picking this up and uh, handling it, however, because the cork being as thin as it, as it is, it's a little more, a little more delicate. I always warn them when they pick up that one that I showed you in the beginning of the video. It, it's tough, but it's also, I, I really don't know. I don't know if it's brittle. It seems like it ought to be, so I'm scared somebody's going to break something. I like it. I like it quite a little bit. I hope you do too. There's the bottom. Cork oak. Such a cool wood. Thank you, Dennis, for bringing this up for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I read all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop.
signing off.